put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Atheus in 3D Move View. When two doctors, archaeologists I guess, but I'm not sure if it really be stated, find a number of ancient carvings that all resemble each other. Surprisingly, in spite of them being, you know, far apart and it being basically impossible for them to have, you know, had contact with each other. So, yeah, there is apparently a... they have a source in common for it. And so they trace this source into outer space, and a few years later, this is like 2092, they wake up from cryosleep, and uh, th yeah, the rest of the movie is them exploring this planet, which may hold answers about where humanity came from. Which is, of course, rather a interesting philosophical theme, and the film does a pretty good job of exploring, you know, this, yeah, this, this theme. And I would like to point out, it is, of course, I personally find that it's more interesting to ponder why we think that it's important to know where exactly we came from and if something living created us or not, I, I find that's more interesting than necessarily knowing with 100% certainty what created us, if anything. And I have a sneaking suspicion the filmmakers are partial to that stance on it as well. So just keep that in mind if, you know, yeah. I I want to just first and foremost address a couple of issues that I personally worried about from the trailers. This is not flashy. In spite of those skin tight suits which were clearly just, you know, placed on the actors for the sake of that chick we used to call Lisbeth Salander, you know, until Rooney Mara played the role, and Charlize Theron, who... <laughs> you could swear this was her, like, audition for, you know, Snow White and the Huntsman. She's a bit of a nice princess. Anyway, in spite of that, and in spite of all the colorful computer stuff, you know, they, they have like holograms to show, they, they have a holographic map of an area and you know, stuff like that. It is not a flashy film. And it is also not a remake of Alien, which I'm very grateful for. It is a sort of spiritual prequel, I would say. You can tell that it was made you know, very much for the people who've already watched Alien. And I would say that you could still enjoy the movie if you don't, if you haven't watched Alien, but I don't think you're going to consider it a complete viewing experience, if that makes sense.
makes sense. I'm really trying not to spoil it in this video, but yeah. By the way, Damon Lindelof write, wrote this, or it was one of the writers, you can tell. For better or for worse, you know, there's there's some lostiness in this, definitely. Now, with that out of the way, great film. I suppose the acting is a good place to start. It's really, really good, and the characterization is very strong. You know, it's 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 somewhat similar actually to Alien, although I would say that you feel more for these characters, and I'm not gonna get into the debate of I've already I've done a review of Alien. Go watch that if you want my exact opinion on the characterization of that. But in this, you do you know you really sympathize with the people and. Yeah, and, and it does a, yes, a strong characterization in that, in just a few lines, in sometimes just a single uh, interaction between a couple of characters, you find out that person's like that, this person's like that, like this, you know, very nicely done, and you may not like everybody, but you know what they are like, you know. One thing I, I do think that... I, very early on, it's this is not a spoiler. When you see the ship, you see that there's this you know, it it has that same text thing like a you know saying you know this is the name of the ship, this is their you know the the nature of the mission. It says there are seventeen crew members aboard, and that in itself is fine. And I felt that that sometimes helped you know add to it that. It's basically twice as many people as, you know, the first one was a little more than that. And, yeah, you know, that makes... I mean, this is basically a movie about a scientific expedition, so sometimes they have a few more people that, you know, it, it is a ship that is there for a scientific expedition. So they have various, you know, experts in various fields and stuff. However, I do think that there's at least one scene where... I could not keep up with who was where and exactly how dangerous the situation was, basically, because I, yeah, they, it had not properly established who was where and how many people were involved in the situation. I felt they could have done a better job than that. With that said, that brings me nicely into both the sort of action scenes, I suppose you could call them, but they're not, you know, it is not really, I'd call it a horror thriller, mostly. Maybe some adventure, but, uh, adventure, a little bit, maybe. But, yeah, there, there's, you know, one or two sort of action scenes. It's again, yeah, again, it is very much in, in line with what Alien is the first movie. It is not trying to... I mean, it's it's a bigger movie and it, it's a more visually compelling movie, but it's not dumbing it down, you know, in order to appeal to a wider audience. It's, you know, it, it is a different take on it somewhat, but it's still a an intelligent take on it. But yes, it's... It's terrifying, <laughs> and there are some por portions where it, it it references. You know, yeah. Again, this is not a spoiler. You see in the trailer. By the way, do not watch the trailer right before watching the movie. It gives way too much away. But yeah, you, you know, you see in the trailer. You're not gonna forget. They evoke the, some of the same imagery. You have this room full of, you know, they, they kind of look like bosses instead of eggs, you know, so, yeah. Some of that is pretty good. However, and, and before I get to the negative, they definitely add something to it. I, there's a scene in this. I don't think it's ever going to truly leave the mind of 
anyone who watches this movie unless, unless that person is just horribly cynical and completely jaded. Except for that. It is burned into your mind. And it's... It's, that, that one scene is worth watching a movie for, frankly. But, th yeah, the entire movie is really good. But yes, with that said, there are some points where they do kind of just... do a little bit of sort of the, the, kind of the, the, the same thing. You know, this is what they did in Alien. And... I don't know, I don't know if it's just supposed to be like an homage or a reference or something. It just didn't... Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I don't blame them. I, I can barely understand that they could actually come up with really brilliant ideas that hadn't already been done. I mean, I'd say with the, f yeah, basically the first and the second Alien movie, they had pretty much exhausted all the really, really great ideas that you could do with that kind of thing without at least somewhat repeating yourself, and yeah. Now, it's also a very, very creepy movie. It has some, yeah, some really grotesque stuff that, excuse me, and it definitely, it's definitely worth noting, excuse me. This entire film is not, excuse me, is not just Alien with a bigger budget and, you know, a changed aesthetic. It is not. There are things in this that, you know, are entirely unlike Alien. We, of course, again have a android, this time played by uh, Michael Fassbender, and it's established that he's an android. First, through him being awake, whilst the others are asleep, in, you know, cryo-sleep, which is quite clever because it has the sort of, you know, he's making sure everything's okay kind of thing, and he has to amuse himself, and it's actually, it's a very nice sequence, it's, it's, yeah, it's basically a montage kind of thing, because it's, you know, <laughs> to show it all would take too long, it takes place over years, you know, the cryostasis and the very far, you know, space travel. So, yeah, he's just going around taking care of things, amusing himself. He, he has a basketball, I guess they're trying to outdo Jack Nicholson's, you know, baseball shining. And he's really good at basketball, actually. I, I'd pay to see a match between David the Android and this and Clone Ripley from Alien Restoration. That, that could be pretty cool. Just those two, yeah. Anyway, yeah, he's, you know, he's like watching old movies and memorizing the lines, and yes, I sh he's actually, part of the reason, at least, that he's there is he's an expert in, you know, with an, as being an android. He can learn stuff really well that humans would have a lot of trouble with. He's learned, like, ancient languages and code. He can read stuff that, you know, there's stuff like that, which, yeah. That's kind of his contribution to the crew. And by the way, it's not a spoiler that he's an android. Everybody in the crew knows it, and the audience from right away. And by the way, if this sequence of him being awake for years, whilst the others have to be in cryo sleep, to, to endure the space travel, if that was not enough to establish that he's an android, then as soon as they arrive at their destination, he doesn't even bat an eye at the sight of a mostly naked, wet Charlie Theron doing push-ups. Yeah, it's clearly. The man is not a man, yeah. Or he's gay. I guess that could be it. But, yeah, it, it must have been really interesting for Fassbender to, to jump into this role after a movie like Shame. Yeah. Now... The visuals are phenomenal. 
the 3D is definitely well worth, you know, the, the extra money. I understand that this was not a post-conversion, it was filmed to be 3D, and it just really, it's, it's a massive movie. I mean, the, the exploration and the, the events, it, it, yeah, it's, it's very big grand in scope and yeah to have the the, the 3d it, it feels like you're there it's very immersive and this is actually uh, all the films that I've ever seen with 3d <laughs> which I guess is not that many because I think they only saw like 2009 with Avatar anyway Avatar back up I don't think I've seen any other movie with 3D where they didn't throw anything like directly at yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure they the movie didn't do that at all it just relied on the atmosphere and 3D doesn't have to be a gimmick it can be used to actually enhance atmosphere and this does it really well like Avatar but <laughs> not many comparisons between the two movies it's definitely worth watching in the theater. Even if you do not watch it in 3D, watch it in theaters. The sound, the, the visuals, the effects are fantastic. I could not tell where you know, the CGI began and the, the reality ended, basically. Everyone's well cast. I suppose that pretty well covers it. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.